the ninth race of the Power V8 Cup Series brings us to the two and a half mile behemoth of a super speedway that is the Talladega Super Speedway. Hello everyone and welcome again for some more Power V8 Cup Series action. We're live for the Peak Antifreeze 500 live from Talladega. We had a total of 53 cars try to go ahead and enter in for the 42 spots for today's race. Just one car shy of our Daytona entry list, making this one of the biggest events of the year that we will see all season. Of course, only 42 can get in, so we only had, uh, we had 11 total DNQs for today's event, and the qualifying race was almost uh, had as many cars that are going to be in today's main event. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get down to the latest headlines. Starting off with our qualifying race recap, it would definitely be a entertaining, but for the most part, a clean race, surprisingly. We would see no yellow flags or cautions throughout the entirety of the 19-lap sprint race. Blake Parker would go ahead and lead us down to the green, but unfortunately for the 07 car, he would not be able to lead for early or for long as he would suffer some trouble getting into the wall. That was really the whole name of the game was a lot of drivers just kept getting into the wall. They kept scraping against it, sliding up against it, slamming into it. You'll see cars checking up, stacking up on each other. Nobody wrecked hard enough to cause a caution, but a lot of cars did suffer quite a bit of damages, and as a result, most of those cars would end up DNQing out of the event. We would go green all the way to the finish, where we'd come down to the end, the last lap battle. Marcus Brown would end up prevailing, and he would go on to win the 19-lap qualifying race. Let's go ahead and take a look at how our championship gauntlet battle is shaping up the top 20 in points and how they're currently standing. We are just seven races away from the beginning of the championship gauntlet. The final 10 races will be the chase for the championship. Roberto Crown Jr. is our current points leader with 111 points. He just holds a five point lead over Christian Russell in second. Russell coming off of his second win of the season showing a lot of consistency but not as much consistency as Roberto Crown Jr. as the 21 has found himself up front in the lead and for the most part dominating most races just hasn't been able to finish them out but he still manages to get good high points paying finishes. Ethan Hayden has held the points lead for quite a bit through the beginning of the season, but he's starting to go on a little bit of a free fall. He's down a good bit of points from our two leaders, and the worst part is he'll be rolling off dead last in today's race, so he hasn't qualified well. But we'll see if he can use his super speedway magic to see if he can replicate the same success as Daytona earlier in the season. Nelson Reeves' consistency has allowed him to creep into the top five, just surpassing Abel DeGroat by about five points. James Fletcher only two points off of DeGroat, followed by Arvin Basic and Justin Henley, who are both tied with 55 points apiece. Brett Bishop currently sits in ninth, and Myron Felder rounds out our top 10 in the championship gauntlet. Him and Owen Scott are in a tie with 50 points apiece, but Felder would beat him on the tiebreaker. Scott will currently sit 11th, still locked into each and every single race for the time being, but not within the top 10 to be able to battle for the championship gauntlet. David Dixon, just one point off of him. He's been in a points free fall, hasn't scored any points within the last four, uh, or only has scored one point within the last four races and it has shown he's fallen back all the way from about second to 12th now. And if he can't get some good points here, it'll more than likely continue. Chris White is a little bit far further behind. He needs to get some points going, followed by Jeff Bolton in 14th. Bolton going to roll off third in today's race. He'll look to have a pretty good shot to improve upon his position. And Adam Wilson, our winner at Old Spice, rounds out the top 15 that are locked into each race. Wilson and Devon Fair are tied on points, but Wilson beats him on the tiebreaker with his win. Nick Kennedy just shortly behind them in 17th, and Zachary DeLello and Boston Jones both in 18th with 34 points. And Ronnie Martin rounds out our top 20 with 33 points. Should be interesting to see how these guys are going to battle it out for the final championship gauntlet spots. As like we said, there are still seven races to go. A lot of time to make up some ground and for some guys to lose their positioning here in the next coming races to see who will ultimately battle for the championship. 
Let's go ahead now and take a look at the starting lineup for today's race. Roberto Crown Jr. will find himself on the pole after Blake Parker failed to make his way to the transfer spots in the qualifying race. Abel De Groot will move his way up into second as well. De Groot will look to be a threat here. He was a huge threat and very strong all the speed weeks. That 27 car looks to be prepped, ready to go once again for him. Jeff Bolton will line up in third, followed by Aiden Smith in fourth. We'll see Be uh, Brett Bishop and Seishin Tomiaka in row three. Tomiaka going to look to have a better race uh, in this race. Really his true debut as uh, last week he was only able to manage not even a corner before he got wiped out and taken out of the race. James Fletcher and Zachary DeLello will line up in row eight. DeLello's team owner for this race, John Ritson, will line up just behind him in ninth. And Arvin Basic will round out the top ten. Second place in the point standings, Christian Russell will line up on the inside of row six with Ronnie Martin to his outside. Already Alejo qualified as or finished second in the qualifying race. He will roll off 13th in today's race with Owen Scott to his outside in 14th. JQ Halak will round out the top 15 with Ruben Gonzalez to her outside. Christian Vargas and Nelson Rees will make up row nine, and Solomon Sheridan and Weston Roper will be rounding out the top 20. Riley Hill will qualify once again for this race this time getting himself into 21st followed by Chris Parker in 22nd David Dixon and Justin Henley make up row 12 followed by Mitchell Collins and Chris White in row 13. Row 14 we'll see Xander Howell and Priya McShane and Nick Kennedy and Adrian Rojas will round out the top 30. Just outside the top 30 we'll see John McFadden and Jeremy Whalen, Adam Wilson and Ben Crouch and Herbert Oaks III and Devon Fair will make up row 16. Row 17 will have Miles Mashburn and Marcus, Ma Marcus Brown. Michael Canaday and Myron Felder will round out the top 20. Two of the Sinclair Canada Racing Hondas not having the best of qualifying performances. We'll see if they can make their way up through the field. Finally, the final two to qualify in for today's race will be Leland Hill and third place in points, Ethan Hayden. Hayden's going to have a lot of work to do if he wants to be able to get himself a good points match. Those who failed to qualify, and it is a long list of cars who failed to qualify, and plenty of quality ones include Josh Moore in the three, Alexander Rowe unfortunately missing out once again, his fourth start, we'll see him miss out for the third time. Roger James in his first race back since his injury that he suffered at Atlanta, that vicious crash with Carl Untesweffer. Um, uh, he was unable to qualify in today's race. Speaking of Untisweffer, he also failed to DNQ as well after it was just announced that he will originally was supposed to be extended with Ronnie Racing. Then they had a dispute and a disagreement, and now Untisweffer will be leaving Ronnie Racing at the end of the season. Cameron Sr. will also DNQ, followed by Cody Goforth, Tari Lowell, second race of the season that he will DNQ, and Zachary Fitzwater Sr. once again also DNQing. Uh, this time this season as well Blake Parker the original pole sitter in qualifying found his way in the wall and all the way back in 51st Dylan Hayden for the fifth race in a row DNQs once again and Boston Jones for the first time this season will not be in the main event a lot of big name talents a lot of guys we've seen up at the front some races and some guys we expected to perform well not doing well at all and uh, well they're definitely gonna have some questions to answer when they get back to the shops on Monday and now let's go trackside for the command of the peak antifreeze 500 drivers start your engines All right, 42 engines are alive and fired away. We're gonna have a long pace lap here at this Talladega Super Speedway. Just a little over 2.6 miles in a total length. Let's go ahead and look at our track analysis for this race. We're gonna go 47 laps around here for today's race will be our distance. Pit window is looking to be around 25 to 30 laps long. So if you want to be able to make it to the end, going need to come down pit road at least once it is a pretty cool day here in talladega 75 degrees fahrenheit with the wind coming in at five miles per hour from the southwest direction plenty of our heavy hitters in the series and our big names up at the front roberto crown jr abel de two of them in the top five jeff bolton within the top 15 in points 
as well and some others that are in the very back of the pack as you're seeing here Ethan Hayden he is currently third in points and out by a pretty good margin just a little over 20 points and uh, that 19 car is going to have a lot of work to do if they want to be able to get a good bit of some points but luckily this is Talladega we are going to see some crazy three four wide action all throughout the event you will not want to miss it this is going to be one of the biggest races of the year and we're glad you're tuned in here with us on the power va cup series here once again for some more good old-fashioned racing 42 cars getting ready as every single one of them just about has an equal shot at winning this race and it can seriously change their outcome for the next for the rest of the season possibly even the next season as well as it was just announced that uh, the power governing body will be coming back for a second season and opening up a new second series more details on that to come later but still the future looking bright here at the premier offline world of esports racing roberto crown brings us to the restart zone and the green flag is out here at talladega trouble in the back couple of ronnie racing cars around weston roper into the double zero of adam wilson ronnie marin got into the wall hard i'm not sure if the cost is out oh they're wrecking hard now it will be ben crouch is around more cars coming on they're coming down the track hope they didn't get hit nope they are fine chris white involved crazy racing back to the line abel to grow all the way on the outside not sure who got there first four wide across the line might have been John Ritson yes it is as the caution is going to come out here on lap one. Oh, they're still wrecking Leland Hill around JQ Halak and he took David Dixon with him more cars getting involved oh no they're going to stack up oh yeah they are nope Marcus Brown gets back into Leland Hill though but it looks like most of the field will be fine all right well we are going to have some replays to go over as the caution is out on lap one so here we'll take a look the trouble is really going to start for ronnie martin as he's going to get up into the wall and that's going to cause a big stack up between some others in the field you see here the 92 get into the wall he's got about three cars behind him on that high line martin in there his own driver and owen scott roper is going to try to come down to avoid then Scott gets into him, hits John McFadden. McFadden saves it, and Roper gets hit but kept going by Adam Wilson. Up ahead, they come up, and they will wreck here with the 22 and the 33 getting hooked, to, uh, hooked together. And they come across the line, clip the double zero in the 52. Those cars manage to keep going. You got more cars here racing as crazy as they can across the line then coming across the yellow as everyone's trying to back down it looks like the 13 gets down yeah the 13 just kind of pinches the 5 into the 45 and causes those cars to crash under the caution period so about three different incidents here you'll then see the 70 get hit by the 5 so some damage there to marcus brown's car Go on board with John McFadden. Take a look at the incredible save that he had to make in order to not lose his car completely. Whew. That was very close. And now we can still get an even better view of these upcoming wrecks. Wow, look at all those cars he passes on the low side. That's all legal due to the wreck avoidance. So some crazy maneuvering having to go on for John McFadden. Go on board here with Chris White, as you'll see him take his one. Actually, he's gonna take a lot of damage in Chris Parker. Come back across. Just 
get sideswiped. One last look at the crash here that's bringing us under caution on lap one. We'll go on board with Adam Wilson as he gets a good look at the first two incidents. He gets up close and personal. They come down. Fixes Weston Roper, gets him back going straight. Very good driving by Wilson to keep that 52 car from going airborne or crashing even worse. And then they wreck ahead right up in front of them and they'll just barely slide down. Cause just a little bit of damage. Caution is out on lap one for several incidents. Welcome back everybody here on lap five we're going to get restarted on lap six after the three several uh separate incidents that happened on the first lap that involved the double zero of adam wilson the five of riley hill we also saw the 13 of jq halak owen scott caught up involved in that chris white was involved david dixon um the 52 of Weston Roper, Marcus Brown, the 89 of John McFadden, and the 92 of Riley or um, Ronnie Martin, excuse me, all involved. The double zero of Adam Wilson, the 70 of Marcus Brown, and the 22 of Chris White, all unfortunately going to be out of the race as they've suffered too much damage uh, from those crashes. Everyone else going to be able to continue. Some cars having to get a little patched up. They have a little bit of damage, but for the most part, most of the field still intact and ready to get restarted here on lap six. John Ritson led us back down to the line, and so he will get the honors of leading the field back down to the green for this restart coming up. Should be interesting to see. He's got a couple of championship gauntlet contenders behind him. Uh, he's got um, Roberto Crown Jr. and James Fletcher. Christian Russell, Jeff Bolton, Brett Bishop, all guys that are within the top 10, top 15 in the points. So it'll be interesting to see how they stack up. Ritson brings us down back to the green as we're restarting here at Talladega. We're back going on lap six. Ritson going to dive down to the low line. Fletcher going to give him a good push. Lots of Chevys here within the top 10. See here already Alejo sporting a new paint job with the new Mountain Dew promotion. But there's Summer of Baja coming up. Here comes Christian Russell trying to make the move. James Fletcher looking to the inside on John Ritson. Ritson getting attacked by the 25 as Fletcher now wants to have a taste of the lead. He's going to get some help from his JCM teammate already Alejo. Solomon Sheridan as well trying to make a push. They're going to go four wide for second. Coming across the tri-oval, they're going to try to hold as best they can. I think Ritson's going to hang on to lead that lap. Yes, he will. No, he won't. James Fletcher actually going to get credit kit, uh, with that. It looks like Christian Russell might be in the wall. Oh, but trouble! Abel DeGroote's around in the back. DeGroote goes hard into the wall, keeps it going, though, and I don't think he got anyone else involved. Not sure if the caution's out. Yes, it is. Caution's out. With Ruben Gonzalez down pit road. Oh, already Alejo hard into the wall. So these guys are going to race their way back to the line. Coming across the trioval, looks like James Fletcher going to win the race back to pit or uh, back to the caution flag. So they're still getting woed up here. See if any more trouble happens. Two of the Good Smile Racing teammates up on the top line. The 17 of John Ritson and the 77 of Zachary DeLello running in sync. Caution is out on lap seven. Take a look here what happens to Abel DeGroote. He's trying to draft with Michael Canaday but gets hooked with the 31. Then comes back up across the track into the 38. And they just kind of have nowhere to go. DeGroote able to keep it off amazingly the rest of the field i'm not exactly sure how they were able to man how they managed to not hit him again but still disappointing for the 27 of abel de Groot. once again here you see de Groot just trying to work with michael canada canada making a part-time scheduling one of his 10 starts he just dips the nose down tries to bump him in the corner and that's never a good idea but somehow is unable to hit anybody else so that's good to see there for the safety and the longevity of everyone else's race. Go on board here with Abel DeGroote. See the wild and scary ride that he takes. Just gets clipped under by Michael Kennedy. And comes back 
got Herbert Oates. Nothing he could do but turn to him. He's able to keep it going. We're going on board here at Michael Canada. As we'll take one last look here at the incident. Caution is out on lap eight due to Abel DeGroat getting turned by the 31. That was close. So with the caution out, we're starting to see some cars come down pit road for strategy. It might be some cars looking to possibly pull off the two stop and see if that will help them get more speed throughout the race. Two of the Vortex racing cars going to come down pit road. We're going to see Leland Hill, Nick Kennedy already, Alejo. The 31 might come down for a little bit of damage repair. The 19, lots of cars coming involved and uh, trying to make some happen on a alternate strategy perhaps as they are not quite within the fuel window just yet. Still have plenty of bit of time um, before they really can you know, get good on that last stop. You see here Christian Vargas coming out, JQ Halak coming out of pit road with some damage repair to the Vortex racing cars come out. Bishop, uh, Brett Bishop actually able to leapfrog Christian Vargas. So you see some cars with the pit strategy here on lap nine. All right, welcome back everybody here to the Peak Antifreeze 500 live from the Talladega Super Speedway. We're under caution on lap 11, gonna get restarted on lap 12 here. Uh, due to the accident that involved Abel de Groot, the 31 of Michael Kennedy, and the 38 of Herbert Oaks the third. all those involved in the incident. Unfortunately for Abel de Groot, he will no longer be able to continue in the event due to the damage that he suffered which is really disappointing he started on the outside pole had a uh, you know was a huge threat going into this a very good super speedway racer proved his worth at speed weeks earlier this season but got caught out in a wreck and is unfortunately no longer going to be able to continue and is most likely is at a very big risk of losing out in the points as james fletcher only a couple points behind him currently sits in first Jeff Bolton in second as well. But there's some others that are just outside of those points. Solomon Sheridan, John Ritson, Jeremy Whalen, a part-time car making his way into the top five. We're going to get restarted here on lap 12. James Fletcher is going to lead us back down to the green here at Talladega. We're getting restarted right now. Bolton going to immediately look to the outside to try to challenge. Salman Sheridan went up with him. Interesting considering Sheridan's teammate right now leading the race. Fletcher just kind of a sitting duck as the lead car always gets sucked in so much by the draft. Here comes two of the Good Smile Racing cars. Ritson and DeLello to the inside. They've been working together quite well this race. Showing their worth as Ritson looking to peek his nose to the inside and go to the lead. Here comes GSR to the front. John Ritson hasn't had the best of seasons yet as Christian Russell going to get nabbed down below the yellow line. Comes back up the track. Clips, oh, clips Ben Crouch with him. I don't know if they're going to keep it going or not. Russell's going to come back up on a weird angle. He comes back into the 54 Leland Hill. A huge crash involved. Hill goes airborne. The two have already Alejo is involved. Oh, Riley Hill gets involved as well. Weston Roper able to make it through. More cars are wrecking. Adrian Rojas, Nelson Reeves involved. Huge accidents here at Talladega as the caution will be back out once again. They're going to race their way back to the line. It's looking like John Ritson going to be the one to lead this down. Back to the caution. Yes, he will. Arvin Basic will dive below him. We'll have to wait and see, but man, vicious, vicious hits. This car is coming up here now. Adrian Rojas, an incredible amount of damage, and quite a few cars done and out of this race. Let's go ahead and get you those replays. So we get a replay here on Russell. He's going to move all the way down below the apron to try to make the move on Ben Crouch. Hooks Crouch. And that was pretty dangerous. Crouch is able to safely rejoin the track, but Russell, not so much, comes up in front of Leland Hill, forces Hill to go airborne, almost flips, and already Alejo has to take two very hard, vicious hits. Russell's actually going to tip over 
on to the banking jq halak car is done riley hill badly damaged many a cars out of this race take a good look at these cars in the back of the pack because a good bit of them were unable to make it through or got into some wrecks of their own as you see here adrian rojas going to get involved He's going to get rammed into, it looks like, by the 89. Yep, McFadden going to turn him up. Somehow the car jumps into the air. Then he gets slammed by Nelson Reeves. That was just odd. The car's coming back up the banking so fast. And, uh, well, they actually got a little bit of air. Another look at this incident. You see Nelson Reeves currently fourth in the point standings. Christian Russell second in points getting involved. A lot of cars that are high up in the point standings. Getting involved in this accident. You'll see Leland Hill come down. And then he just kind of jumps up. And then hits tremendously, incredibly hard with the 76 of Nelson Reeves. Then we'll get another look here at the tremendously vicious hits that Riley Hill suffers. Both Hill brothers getting involved in this very scary crash. As they come right through, him and Weston Roper. Roper was kind of able to daze of thunder it, but Riley Hill, not so fortunate. We'll also take a look at how David Dixon gets involved. Dixon really needed a good points finish. He's been on a free fall in points. As we said, only one point in the last four races. And it's going to turn to one point in the last five as he hits Chris Parker head on. Very hard, very vicious hits, but most of the drivers appear to be okay and able to get out of their cars under their own power. Go on board with Leland Hill for this wild ride that he takes. Many cars involved in this one. As Christian Russell comes right back up the track. 54 almost flips over. Someone with an even wilder ride is Weston Roper as he was able to manage his way through all of the chaos and trouble. Get out of the wreck without too much damage from the looks of it. You see the wreck, the chaos happening at the top of your screen in that very top left corner. The car is all crashing down. Roper decides to just keep his foot in it. Goes right through the first hole. Makes it through the second hole. Coming across the third, everything's going to clear up his way for him. Weston Roper holding his foot down, keeping it in it, and out of trouble. Now, unfortunately, someone not as lucky as Roper is going to be the five of Riley Hill as he is going to show you his uh, number five Loki Toyota not going to come to a very nice demise. See here his brother Leland almost flipping up at the top screen and then he just comes right into Alrighty Alejo. Huge hit for the five car. One more look here at this vicious and scary incident. As Leland Hill goes for a wild ride, both Hill brothers, in fact, take really hard hits. See David Dixon get involved and then Riley going up the track. And that'll bring us out the caution once again here in today's race. Here under caution right now, looking like more pit stops could be a possibility. As we see most of the leaders looking to come down pit road. Pretty much the entire field coming down. I don't see too many, if anyone. Oh, it looks like Vargas and Weston Roper going to stay out. The rest of the field, though, possibly going to try that two-stop strategy as well. Look at our onboard camera here. Taking a look at the pit stops being done, you'll see the view on pit road. From the driver's perspective, one of the best camera angles that we have, the in-car helmet cam. One of the new cams that we'll be seeing. Very interesting to see all these cars coming out of pit road. Pit stops occurring. Christian Vargas going to rotate as your new leader. Welcome back everybody here to the Talladega Super Speedway as we're about to get set and restarted here 
on lap 18 involving the third wreck of the day that included the likes of Ben Crouch, Alrighty Alejo, Riley Hill, JQ Halak, the 39 of Christian Russell, Chris Parker involved in it as well, David Dixon, Leland Hill, the 76 of Nelson Reeves, Adrian Rojas, and the 89 of John McFadden all going to be out of the race. Ben Crouch, the only one who is going to be able to continue as he didn't really get into any huge accidents, just got off track for a little bit. But everyone else got involved in that heavy, heavy collisions. And as a result, they will not be able to continue on. We have just a little less than about 30 cars in this race. And a little less than 30 laps to go as we're going to get restarted here. Christian Vargas and Weston Roper stayed out from the rest of the field. Ruben Gonzalez... I believe stayed out as well. He pitted a few times under green. Something's definitely wrong with that 26 Dodge, but right now he's up at the front. As the rest of our leaders had to come down pit road. Vargas going to lead us back down to the green here on the restart. Ruben Gonzalez going to jump down. The 52 of Weston Roper is sinking very quick as that 52 car definitely not up to speed Vargas going to lead in front of the pack Ruben Gonzalez now trying to chase behind him and grab the lead for the first time today Gonzalez ran very strong at Daytona earlier in the season I believe he finished third Seishin Tomiaka in his debut still managing in this race keeping along with him trying to lead his first laps three wide for second though is Christian Vargas going to block over the main pack and Vargas will get the lap led that was like our first lap of true green flag racing that we've seen all day very wreck filled but hopefully now we can get ourselves some good pack racing here to the end John Ritson trying to get up to the front he's got Aiden Smith dropping down low behind him Cars coming across the back stretch here. Three wide for the lead. Christian Vargas getting a big push from Jeremy Whalen on that high side. But we're seeing now here Aiden Smith with James Fletcher right down below. Fletcher going to dive the nose to the inside of that 40 car. Three wide all around this front pack. Fletcher going to look for the lead. So is Zachary DeLello. Three wide for the lead. Coming across the line, it's looking like Fletcher is going to lead that lap. Four wide for the lead now. Here comes Brett Bishop to the inside. Aiden Smith heavy in the wall with Christian Vargas to his outside. Vargas in the wall. He gets into basic. Trouble in the back once again. Two cars are around. See if they involve anyone else. Oh, my goodness. What a hit. Myron Felder upside down and around. He went for a wild ride. As the caution is going to come back out. Race back to the line now. Roberto Crown Jr. racing hard with Brett Bishop. Crown Jr., the points leader, going to try to get back there to the line. I'm not sure who's going to get it. It is going to be Brett Bishop. He will be our fourth leader of this race. Caution is out for a heavy hit with Myron Felder. Take a replay here of the scary incident involving Christian Vargas. Him and Aiden Smith going to get up in the wall. That's been a big problem that we saw in the qualifying race. Guys getting up in the wall. Vargas gets knocked down by Aiden Smith and hits Arvin Basic. Then the two come sliding across the track with no control. And Myron Felder goes for an absolutely wild ride. Flipping up and over and using a couple cars to uh, catch his fall. Take a look at Myron Felder. You see how far back and off the pack they are. Just kind of chilling. A lot of these cars were here in the back to avoid the big one, not get caught up in it. And Myron Felder, though, drafting along with Mitchell Collins, and then he goes low and has nowhere to go. Is Vargas going to come back down in front of him? He goes for an absolutely wild ride. Gets caught by the 34 and the 44 and is able to land on all four wheels, thankfully. On board here with Myron Felder as we'll see the wild ride that he takes. Comes up on Mitchell Collins. The wreck starts to happen here. And with the smoke and Vargas coming down, he's just going to go for a wild ride. That is absolutely nuts. One more look at the crazy incident here that's going to bring out the caution once again. Christian Vargas going to include Arvin Basic, 
and uh, make Myron Felder go for a crazy ride as they come back down across the track. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back, everybody here to Talladega. We're going to get restarted on lap 25 after our fourth caution of the day involving the likes of Christian Vargas, Jeff Bolton, the 40 of Aiden Smith, Arvin Basic, Myron Felder, Miles Mashburn, and the 99 of Xander Howell. Aiden Smith and Miles Mashburn, the only ones that were involved in that wreck that are going to be able to keep on going as the field lap by lap keeps getting thinner and thinner. Lots of wrecks been going on, small wrecks, but they've been getting bigger and bigger each and every single time. And it'll be interesting to see whether or not the field can be able to get themselves a good green flag run going. Or if we are going to see a wreck filled uh, Talladega race like good old Talladega can normally provide. Pace car is going to come back in, though. Brett Bishop going to try to lead us down. Our championship leader, Roberto Crown Jr., sits in second. Ruben Gonzalez in third, followed by Justin Henley in fourth. Ben Crouch recovering quite nicely in the fifth position. Solomon Sherrod in sixth. Uh, Station Tomiyaka in seventh. John Ritson, he's had an absolute missile of a car today. He's currently eighth. Jeremy Whalen ninth. And Ronnie Martin will round out the top 10. Brett Bishop will lead us to the restart zone and the green flag is back out in the air here at Talladega. Already see some three wide action between the cars. As we are getting set now to get restarted. Some three wide maneuvering in the back here. Crouch getting on the rear of Ruben Gonzalez, pitching him down a little bit. As the 12 of Brett Bishop going to hold his own. Field going three wide throughout the pack. Ruben Gonzalez will move up to the top. Here comes the 17 of John Ritson. He's going to go three wide with Ronnie Martin. Ritson going to try to dive to the low side to block the run the 92 had. He's going to be successful in that. Four wide now for second as we see Ben Crouch in the wall just a slight bit. Most of the field going to be able to avoid him though. We will stay going. Nobody's going to get involved in the wreck as this is pretty much the entire pack. Couple of stragglers in the back, Mashburn and Roper with their damage. Just trying to make it to the end and survive. Many a car, so we see here now Brett Bishop starting to lose out to the lead. John Ritson going to try to come back and lead this race once again. He's led the most laps so far. As the number 17, Good Smile Racing Mercedes has been hooked up. Him and DeLello, they've been very strong. And they've found themselves together quite a bit. DeLello, though, a little bit in the back of the pack for the time being. Oh, car in the wall. That is the 12 of Brett Bishop. He's going to take a tremendous amount of damage to that car. That is something he did not want to see, considering he's fighting for the top 10 spots and points. And he just absolutely crunched up his Rockstar Energy Toyota. Four wide throughout the pack now. We see Ronnie Martin down low. Roberto Crown Jr. trying to make the move stick. James Fletcher able to capitalize and take the lead. But Seishin Tomiaka trying to get his first laps led on the year. Tomiaka not quite to the line just yet, but he will have the advantage. The 98 and the 01 currently fighting it out. Three wide for second. DeLello making his way up through the pack. Ruben Gonzalez searching for a lane to go to. And he will be able to get down to the bottom. Four wide. As Ritson close in the wall. Fletcher now hard in the wall. They're trouble. They're wrecking. Another huge wreck. Two cars up and over. The 92 and the 25 up and around. A huge wreck involving many of our heady hitters. Fletcher still going up and over, up and over, and finally comes to a stop on his roof. Caution is going to come out. Many a car is involved, a lot of good ones, in fact, getting caught up in that incident. Looks like Zachary DeLello going to lead us down to the yellow. 
this wreck is an absolute wild one is two of our heavy hitters and contenders of this race actually a good bit of them even more getting out of the race fletcher ritson and martin all go to the very top line going four wide they get caught up in the wall that's been such a problem all day long for these cars and then you see the 17 and the 92 hooked together come back up across the field i think a few cars went under ronnie martin so we see the 17 and the 25 still flipping the 17 back under its own power but an absolutely vicious wreck to see another look at the crash here you see martin dips his nose under ritson as they're getting in the wall that forces them to come back down into traffic involving Whalen and mitchell collins solomon sheridan got a piece of that and yeah the 19 of ethan hayden i think went under the 92 of ronnie martin look at this crazy incident ethan hayden's been staying in the back avoiding the trouble and well wow how did he do that michael Canada gonna get a good piece of this His cars all come back in front of him and you will just barely see the 19 of ethan hayden going under the 92 of ronnie martin one more look at how the 19 was able to go under the chaos absolutely crazy incident here ethan hayden doing everything he can to stay in this race it's been throwing caution to the wind for him as he's been staying in the back and getting out of trouble. Take one more look at this crazy incident here. I was going to bring out the caution for the fifth time today. We're definitely going to break the cautions record in this race. As two cars go up and over. And Ronnie Martin goes for a crazy ride. We'll be right back after this. Hello everyone, welcome back once again here under caution for the fifth time today involving the huge incident with Mitchell Collins, Solomon Sheridan, John Ritson, James Fletcher, Michael Canaday, the 56 of Jeremy Whalen, and the 92 of Ronnie Martin. The only ones that are going to be able to continue on after that wreck is Solomon Sheridan. He didn't get too much damage and uh, Michael Canaday, they were able to repair most of his damage but everyone else going to be out of this race. I don't even know if we're going to finish with enough finishers for this. A lot of guys here up at the front. We've seen a lot of good, hard championship contenders get taken out in this race, but the one guy who has kept his nose clean so far, Roberto Crown Jr., our points leader. Um, there's still been a couple of guys up at the front. Owen Scott, another one of them that's notable, and Ethan Hayden has done an amazing job. He's been staying in the back for the majority of this race, trying to avoid the incidents, playing his Daytona strategy, and it seems to be working. The cards are falling just right. We're going to get restarted here now on lap 33. Zachary Delello is going to lead us down to the green in his Good Smile Racing Mercedes. Restart now on lap 33 is out and away. Good bit of cars are going to be damaged as coming across the line it is looking like for the 15th position it is going to be wherever brett bishop is he looks to be the 15th place car everyone on back is just outside the points only five cars beaten and battered but are going to try to stay their way out of trouble the rest of these 15 they're going to try to go for the win because they all got a shot at the win and worst case scenario you get yourself a decent points paying position and you get yourself some points station tomiaka looking to the inside of zachary delello hard on the bumper throughout the corners here as these cars still getting up to speed that 53 wanting to prove to the world that he is here to fight and win races as last week he didn't get to have much of a debut if any at all here he comes now to the inside though tomiaka to the lead with help from owen scott around the 77 of zachary delello coming to these final stages of the races here what should be interesting to note too i think there is going to be a need for some pit strategy as uh well many of these cars still pitted a little early outside of the pit window so we might still need a second stop for the majority of these guys to make it to the end here but right now seishin tomiaka burning the most fuel out of anyone out in front leading the pack and out in front carefully the 15 of Owen Scott creeping his way up through. Like we said, most of these uh, drivers that were in the top 15 in points have been taken out in wrecks. Four wide for third. Henley to the bottom. It's got McShane. Delello in the wall hard. Zachary Delello can't get off of it. That's going to absolutely kill his momentum and send him all the way back down to the final position in the points. 
which looks to be possibly right actually they might still be in the points looks like sheridan might have the final spot look at him go as uh, you're seeing now ben crouch way off the pace might be at risk of getting lapped here as the seven as the 53 is station tomiaka gonna come through to lead once more tomiaka out in front and in control of this pack it's been thinning and thinning lap by lap as we're coming down to the crunch time here about 12 laps to go in this race like i said everyone in this main pack out in front has a equal chance of being able to win this race and they all want to take advantage of it most of these guys here don't even have a win as the only one that looks to have won so far this season is the 75 of justin henley everyone else still looking for their first career win many of their teams looking for their first career win you're seeing here right now this 53 team with Jeff Bowen Racing. They haven't been able to win so far this season. And right now it's Station Tomiaka. He's looking like the guy to beat. But here comes Priya McShane down to the inside. She wants a battle at the lead. Trying to get Sinclair Canada Racing. And Honda, their first win with just 11 laps to go. They're going to come up on the lap traffic of Ben Crouch. Hopefully he won't be too much of a factor considering it is just one car as we see the crazy amount of pull on the backstretch. The 01 is starting to get into the corner. Devon Fair wants to look to the inside now. He's on a part-time schedule. He's got something to prove. As Herbert Oaks also coming down. They're going to chop him down low to block that inside line. These two lines running really well, really competitive here. As the 98 of Priya McShane going to lead that lap. The 53 and the 40 caught up on the high side. The 48 and Smith once again in the wall. Aiden Smith comes back down in front of Ruben Gonzalez. They're going to be able to save it, though. Tomiaka and the 50, uh, or the 26, excuse me, of Ruben Gonzalez. They are going to be able to save it after Aiden Smith got up in the wall once again. That's been a problem with Aiden Smith getting in that wall. But now Devon Fair out in front, in front of his own team owner, Owen Scott. Scott not going to give him too much help, though, because he wants to go get a taste of the lead. Remember, all these drivers leading laps, this is going to give them bonus points as well for getting those lap led bonuses coming across the line it's going to be the 15 of owen scott who will lead that lap so far our eighth different leader is our points leader roberto crown jr heavy in the wall crown jr got caught up in it now that is great news for everyone behind him in the points as well he is going to fall off the pack and unless they wreck Oh boy, Roberto Crown Jr. going to lose out on a tremendous batch of points. Tomiaka back out in front to the lead as we are coming up to just eight laps to go. Three wide for second. Aiden Smith coming back despite all the damage. Gonzalez as well too in the middle line trying to hold and prevail. He will move to the bottom. Oh, a couple of cars going way up top. Henley might get himself in the wall. Devon Fair going to dip down low. So will Nick Kennedy. They're going to try to get out of that line. They will hold for the time being. Ben Crouch mixing it up as the lap car. And we'll see if there's any more lap traffic. Yes, there is. They are going to approach on Weston Roper very heavily here. Coming out of the corner of turn four. With just seven laps to go now in the reach. It's anybody's game within this main pack here. Ruben Gonzalez wants to try to get his first win. Hasn't gotten a points finish since his second place finish at Daytona. And Gonzalez wanted to be able to bring home Fitzwater Australia, their first win of the season. FAR as a whole still have a lot of questions about their future as they're coming up on Weston Roper. Tomiaka going to get around the 52. But he's going to hold up the top line. And the 26, 38, and the 01 all going to get held up by the 52. The 15, Owen Scott as well. They're trying to go four wide to get around him. So many cars getting held up now. It might become a five-car race for the win. Just six laps to go. Tomiaka out in front. The lap car of Ben Crouch. Mixing it up, trying to get his lap back. He's got Nick Kennedy and Priya McShane to the bottom. Brett Bishop also trying to make a run. These cars have finally gone around the 52 of Weston Roper. They are going to form up and try to catch their way back up to the pack. They're going to have to do it soon, though. It's looking like these guys really wanted to make some moves. Tomiaka out in front and out in front comfortably. He's been running away, leading laps, checking them down like it's nobody's business. 
Nick Kennedy getting a good run. Brett Bishop looking to the inside of Priya McShane. Five laps to go. This backpack here, though, starting to form up these six cars. They got to start getting work together. If they all could get in a single file line, they'll easily catch up this pack because that's exactly what they're doing. They're in a single file line trying to wait till the end to make their move and get away from that backpack as much as they can because I hate to say it, six cars can work better than five, but at the moment right now, the five's working better. Brett Bishop getting passed by Priya McShane as they're going to swap around, try to cool off the engine temps. McShane going to dive to the inside. Try to cool those engines down as we are coming to the wire. Seishin Tomiaka out in front and in control. His teammate, Nick Kennedy, right behind him, though. Both of these drivers looking to go ahead and get their first career win. It is a Jeff Bolton racing 1-2 out in front right now. Priya McShane, though, wants to make an end to it. Here comes the rest of the pack. Owen Scott now looking to the middle lane. Justin Henley has a run on the bottom line. He's got Devon Fair right behind him as well. Fair looking to try to get himself back in the top 15. Despite being a part-time effort, the 0-1 still has a lot of strength and wants to battle for this championship. The 26 now looking to make his way to the inside. Henley going to work with the lap car. Try to use Ben Crouch to reel him into the leader of Tomiaka. Just three laps to go now here at Talladega. Three wide all throughout the pack. Henley. Using that lap car to reel in the 53. He's going to try to move to the bottom. Justin Henley trying to go for his second win of the season. Looks to the inside. Going to make his move. Not sure if he has enough momentum. He does not. Can't even get around the 03. As the 03 able to draft off the 53 now. It is a Ford 1-2 Dodge 3-4. Ruben Gonzalez moving to the inside with help from Priya McShane. Two laps to go here at Talladega Super Speedway. Can anybody catch up to Seisha Tomiaka and make a challenge? He has been absolutely incredible in the second half of this race. We've made it green all the way to the end. We'll see if it can continue that way. Justin Henley trying to make the move on Brett Bishop. There is a little bit of lap traffic ahead. I'm not sure if they are going to be a factor or not. Four damaged cars all on top of one another coming across to the end. Priya McShane making her way up to the front. She wants to be the first female to win in Power Via Cup Series history. She's going to dive to the inside of Ben Crouch. Try to get right up to the 53 of Station Tomiaka. Coming across the trioval one more time. White flag in the air. The 53 of Tomiaka looking to make the move. McShane out in front trying to reel him in. He's got help from Henley and Brett Bishop. Nick Kennedy also up there. Lap traffic may be a factor, but I think we're just going to be able to avoid them. Owen Scott looking to go three wide. Here comes Priya McShane. Will she make her move? She's going to look to the inside. Dives the nose in there. Trying to get a good run out of the corner. Remember the trioval, the start finish line, much further behind. Henley looking to the inside of McShane. Tomiaka going to block. Coming across the trioval, Seisha Tomiaka in his second ever race is going to win at Talladega. What a race. Jeff Bull and Racing getting their first career win, and two of their cars will finish in the top five. Priya McShane gets her best career finish in second. Justin Henley will finish third, followed by Brett Bishop in fourth, Kennedy fifth. Owen Scott will come up in sixth, Devon Fair in seventh, right behind his boss. Eighth, we'll see Ruben Gonzalez. Ninth, Aiden Smith, and all the way back behind himself, uh, Herbert Oaks the third, getting his first career top ten in his second start. But what a performance by the 53 of Seishin Tomiaka. Let's go ahead and take a look at our finishing results for this race. Winning it all is Seishin Tomiaka on his second ever start. Comes home with the W for Jeff Bolton Racing. Priya McShane will be our runner-up with Justin Henley coming home third, Brett Bishop fourth, and Nick Kennedy in fifth. Some good points days for those guys that needed it. Owen Scott will finish sixth, Devon Fair seventh, Gonzalez in eighth, Aiden Smith ninth, and Herbert Oaks the third will round out our top ten. Points leader Roberto Crown Jr. would suffer a bit of damage but still fall back to 11th place in points. And 12th would be Ethan Hayden, 13th Zachary DeLello, 14th Solomon Sheridan, and 15th Miles Mashburn. 
Michael Canaday would be the last one to finish on the lead lap and be the first one to finish outside of the points. Ben Crouch and Weston Roper would go on to finish one lap down and be the final ones that would be able to finish the race at all. Everyone else would retire from the race, starting with Jeremy Whalen, uh, Ronnie Martin, and John Ritson, along with Weston Roper. Then we'll also see Fletcher, Collins, Basic, Vargas, Felder, Xander Howell, Jeff Bolton, uh, John McFadden, and JQ Halak all retiring out of the race due to some huge incidents that we saw throughout the entire event. Christian Russell, Leland Hill, Alrighty Alejo, Adrian Rojas, Chris Parker, Nelson Reeves, David Dixon, Riley Hill, Abel DeGroat, Adam Wilson, Marcus Brown, and Chris White, all the other final remaining finishers. A lot of them uh, inside a good bit of the points positions that are higher up 